scuffed up a little bit here. Many animals rely on a keen sense of smell to locate and follow their prey. However, two of nature's biggest predators, the big cats and man, share a common weakness in this respect. When they hunt, both have had to substitute eyesight and cunning for sense of smell. Our continent's first settlers, the American Indians, lived much more closely with nature than we do today. They adapted for their use many of nature's most clever tricks, including the ability to track their prey. Could be, uh, it's like we're going that way. Right around that dead Indian tobacco. Today, centuries later, the American continent's latest settlers are having to relearn the ancient art of tracking as a useful tool with a number of important and useful applications. The purpose of this videotape is to make you aware of the possibilities for tracking, or sign cutting as it's called, what it is, who can do it, and how it's done, and to point out some areas where it is a natural tool that can be used with extremely effective results. Utilizing the students at a tracking awareness training session in the mountains of eastern Oregon and along the Columbia River, we'll show you the rudiments of tracking. Now, if stepping off the log... Our purpose is to make you track aware, along with them. Our training exercises were organized by the Search and Rescue Advisory Council of the Oregon State Sheriff's Association, and were taught by one of this country's most able trackers, Joel Harden, of the U.S. Border Patrol's Blaine, Washington office. Joel has been an instructor at a number of these seminars in the Northwest. He brought together a team of experienced trackers. They were working with beginning and advanced teams from Search and Rescue, from Northwest law enforcement agencies, and from the military. With the beginners, Joel's purpose was to introduce them to what he calls sign, that is, the various clues left when man travels anywhere by foot. Uh, it's a term used basically by Border Patrol sign cutters or trackers and uh, people that we have taught over the years. The term sign comes from the discoverable evidence in, in deference to tracks. Most people when we talk about tracking, think that we're looking for footprints as they would be going through a snowbank or through a patch of snow. And in fact, that's, in reality, that's not it at all. Sign is the discoverable evidence that's left by the passing of a person. <laughs> One of Joel's main messages is that anywhere man walks, he leaves sign. And he emphasizes during the beginning of a training session, anyone can see sign. It's mostly a matter of looking, knowing what you're looking for, and correct interpretation. Most people, general and general speaking, people walk by placing one foot in front of the other and propel the body forward. Uh, as you move forward, the rear of the heel strikes the ground, much as it has done here. And then as the body weight is propelled forward by the muscle and bone structure. The weight rocks forward across the heel, leaving, generally speaking, a good, sharp, heavy, impacted area across the heel, across then the arch of the foot or the instep onto the ball of the foot as the weight comes forward on the body to the ball of the foot and stepping off of the toe then, actually coming off of the toe about the same time, the same instant as the next successive step is striking the ground with the back of the heel. So therefore we have one step rolling after the other. The beginning teams are looking for several categories of sign left by man. Scuffs and scrapes are caused by footgear contacting ground, which is generally too hard to dent. They indicate motion, forward, backward, turning. Rolled rocks, cracks or breaks of soil surface around larger rocks. These generally are caused by a person stepping on them. Small rocks too show sign most often because they have been rolled in the direction of travel and mashed into the surface soil. Compacting of small rocks or sand in a uniform manner and area consistent with the size or type of footgear being followed. Broken twigs, small particles of twigs, which are broken and pressed in a way which looks like damage from a human foot. Compressed areas, areas the size and shape of the identified footgear, which reflect, diffuse, or absorb the light in such a way as to show the negative or positive image of a print. Toe digs, indented areas in the shape and size of the toe on the shoe being followed. This corresponds to the pressure of the forward walking motion where a person has stepped off the toe, causing the matter under the toe pressure to be kicked slightly backward. Heel marks, 
the curved mark or impression on the ground surface made by the normal walking motion. Vegetation damage, the bruising or brushing or tearing of stems and leaves or ground cover that isn't consistent with animal or other natural activity. By the way, the number of feet and type of foot make it unlikely to confuse animal tracks with human sign, unless you're following a person who has four feet, which might be cloven or clawed, in which case we suggest you proceed with great caution. But Joel emphasizes, you've got to believe. A lot of people don't believe that sign cutting works, but it really does work. On one occasion several years ago, I was called upon to assist in a search for a four-year-old boy that had been lost for five days. When I arrived on the search scene, 450 to 500 people had exhausted themselves and every conventional search method. But because one alert, bright uh, explorer scout on the first day of the search who had been to a tracking class located and isolated one skid mark that he thought belong, could belong to a four-year-old child, from that particular mark, it wasn't really a footprint at all, but just a mark. We were able to successfully follow the chain of sign from that place, the location to where the boy was found. Okay, the last one we used, actually used tracking, was an archery hunter hunting in the high country up near Broken Top in Happy Valley area. He failed to come back to camp. Search and rescue was called. We called our tracking teams out. They tracked through the night. He was found approximately noon the next day, roughly 15 miles from the area. Um, he had wandered in and out of a creek bed area and down the drainage, and they found him near Tumalo Falls. But it was through tracking. We had uh, four tracking teams out, crisscrossing the trail, jumping ahead, cutting for sign ahead, and so on. And it was a successful search, and it was through tracking that they found him. Since having uh, tracking experience and the training and such, I've utilized it a lot in the area of investigation in that uh, we solved a lot of burglaries, rapes, runaways, and even attempted homicide uh, utilizing the art of tracking. In the attempted homicide, we actually were able to create a blueprint of the crime when the four suspects in the crime um, we were able to recreate exactly how it occurred in that the prime suspect that did the shooting, we showed exactly where he was laid, let off near the residence was able to go around uh, the house showing exactly where he wa went, cutting the phone lines, going around, shooting the victim, subsequently um, secreting himself a short ways away, and then shooting again uh, at the victim when he was being transported to the hospital. Um, they had no problem at all in convicting the individual, being able to show jury exactly how this happened, utilizing tracking as a uh, method to recreate the crime. Crime scene identification requires minute examination of sign. The experience necessary to make sign cutting a useful crime scene tool begins in classes such as this. After several hours of classroom instruction, where he explained the basics of tracking, equipment, what to look for, and other general points of interest, it was out into the field. I'll go out here and, and just kind of gang up out here and we'll form up into teams. Instructors had laid track during the morning session for both beginners and advanced classes. The beginning teams went to work on level ground, teams of three and an instructor. To begin with, they learned that sign cutting is a painstaking business. Joel likes to emphasize that anyone can cut sign, but he says that there are certain qualities which will greatly assist you in learning and maintaining a skill level in tracking. Patience, aptitude, interest, common sense, reasoning ability and perseverance are the qualities of a good tracker. For beginners, a good footprint is laid to start the exercise. Each team member is equipped with a sheet to record necessary information. Students measure the length of the track from rear of the heel to tip of the toe. Then the width and length of the heel, if there is one, is measured. The sole at the widest point is next, and the shape of the toe is examined if there is one. Careful notation is made of these dimensions. These students have a sole and heel identification form produced by Oregon Search and Rescue, but if one isn't available, a picture of the track is drawn and the measurements and toe shapes noted. Length of the whole foot is 12 inches. Width across the ball of the foot is four. Across the width of the heel is three and a half. From the uh, Head of the heel to the back of the heel, three and a half inches. We determined that it was a flat-soled 
shoe, which was smooth, more than likely a tennis shoe, which uh, they have a basic graph that we can go by here. We determined it was style number F5 for right now. This information is useful for the beginner in identifying the right sign later and it can be copied and passed out to other teams. It can be crucial in passing an accurate description to other teams over a radio. Joel points out that it is important to be able to provide a verbal picture of the print over the radio, so it is important to choose easily understood descriptive phrases. Right sole and a cut mark on the left heel. For these measurements, the tracker's equipment should include a small tape measure. Accurate measurements ensure positive identification. You'll notice that our trackers all have poles of one sort or another. These are sign cutting sticks. They are used to judge the prime sign area once a length of stride is established. Joel likes to measure from the tip of the toe to the back of the heel of the next step, but other ways to measure can be just as accurate. The sign cutting or tracking stick should be swung slowly in a 30 degree arc to the right and left of center over the prime sign area to help concentrate attention. Their sharp point is also good for marking sign, which we'll talk about a little later. We teach in our seminars a normal tracking team or an ideal tracking team would consist of three persons. The point man, which leads the sign or directs the activity, he has the track, he knows where the sign's going, and he's on the last track and looking for the next succeeding track. You have a flanker to the right and to the left, and generally, like one step immediately, uh, behind you. Uh, the purpose of those two people are to look for a sign that would be converging on the the actual sign or some some sign that was diverting or going away from your line of sign. Okay, looks like he stopped right here. For he some could, reason, left a good track. Could drown it, yeah, it kind of makes you wonder if he doesn't want to be found, but he wants to take time to do it. Okay, here's his next step. Inexperienced teams are encouraged to keep up a constant flow of discussion about sign under the old theory that three heads are better than one. Team members should be rotated to allow them to relax and rest their eyes. Sign cutting is a highly concentrated mind and eye tiring process. Most sign is small minute particles of sign that fit into the individual footprint and not easy to read uh, big prints that your blind uncle could see. Joel's beginning class has particularly tough going over the pine needle flooring of the eastern Oregon forest. Many of the more subtle signs are difficult to capture on tape, but members of the teams find them and move ahead. Usually if you're doing tracking for a long time and you've been looking at the ground and you're just tired of looking at the ground, your eyes don't see what you're supposed to see, so you look away you just kind of gaze around. Look back down at the ground, you're going to see it. It's going to stare you right in the face. It never fails. As any tracker can tell you, it's not a gentleman's art. Sign is found by getting your nose close to the ground and examining the signs, particularly in tricky circumstances such as these. Sometimes the sign is beneath a top layer, and the tracker can feel it through the needles. Don't forget he's stepping over a log yeah. or a brand. Working with beginners, there is a lot of emphasis on recognizing sign. Instructors with each group point out the sign and help students understand what they are seeing. And understanding and interpreting what you see isn't easy. In this class, there were people who had experience with successful searches, but who felt that they weren't quite ready for the speed and subtleties of intermediate or advanced trackers. More experienced trackers can tell a number of characteristics from a careful reading or cutting of the available sign. They can tell number and characteristics of persons, the age of the sign, and the direction being traveled, among other things. The physical condition and mental attitude also is generally reflected by the length of stride, manner and impact of shoes, heels, and toes. Persons carrying extra weight, such as backpacks, are indicated by the impact of prints, care taken to maintain balance, or whether or not it was necessary to sidestep through or around trees and brush. When a person is lost, there is usually a stride change at the top of a ridge or a hill near some definite landmark. The slowing and closing of stride as obstacles approach indicate a cautious or wary person. Whether a person is trying to evade his pursuers is something we'll cover briefly in the military section of this videotape. But suffice to say for now that attempts to camouflage sign generally indicate a wee bit of guilty conscience to say the least. 
One of the most critical things to tell from sign or to read from sign is the age or the time since the sign has been made. All sign from the instant that it's made begins the aging process, which is actually with vegetation the process of nature to heal or to cure the vegetation. With on dirt or, or open barren ground, it's a process by which uh, the sign is worn away by the natural elements or affected by the natural elements. The sun dries, causes color changes, wilts, and evaporates moisture or sap from damaged vegetation, aiding its healing process. The wind aids drying, blows small particles of dirt across sign. It blows grasses and bushes, helping them return to their natural condition. Uh, the dew at night will cause, a, will cause a change. It refreshes vegetation that has been damaged during the day. A wilting in the afternoon sun will be refreshed at night by the dew at night. Frosting and freezing, of course, will affect in, in the usual manner by uh, securing or stilling the aging process during the time that it's frozen or, or cooled. Rain obviously can wash sign out, wash it away entirely or erode portions of it. However, rain gives us one of a uh, good indication of when sign was created before or after the last rain or whatever time is consistent with the known time of the last rainfall. So it's actually a good aging process or a good uh, cue to tell the process, the age of the sign from. Complicated? We need to underscore the need for training and experience in tracking. To make things really confusing, the possible combinations of all these signs tell different things. But that requires a number of training sessions and a fair amount of experience, either from training or actual searches. While the beginners are looking at basic recognition, a similar exercise is underway for more advanced trackers. To make the advanced classes a little more challenging, a real-life simulation was planned for one of the sheriff's units attending the class. A friend of one of the instructors was pressed into service as a fugitive. Charlie, as he was called, was off through the woods to avoid the law enforcement officers. After checking the car, very clear sign is discovered heading off into the brush, and the team begins to follow the prints. Because this is a training exercise, they are more methodical than normal, but that provides a good example. That's probably the best, that's the best waffle pattern we've got right there. Okay, we'll just work on that aspect. Okay, based on, with the recent rain we've had and everything, we don't have much depth as far as moisture goes, so this track's uh, been since the last rain we got. Light conditions today are fairly good for cutting sign. The tracks are easily seen as they go off into the woods. But light is another important aspect to cutting sign. This footprint is much more obvious to our tracking team from this angle than from the other side because of the highlights provided by light. Because light is so important, you probably can guess that night tracking is possible with the use of a flashlight. In some ways, it can be even easier because you can rotate your light source to check for sign from all angles. Meanwhile, Charlie has tried to fool our trackers by crossing the road. The sandbanks mean that he left clear sign of his passage, and the team easily follows him, again keeping up a stream of constant communication, ever mindful that this is a training session. Track still got dry dirt in it, still raining. It's been here within the last few minutes. A clear footprint in the gravel. Charlie has walked along the side of the road, and our trackers take a measurement to check against the first prints they found. The gravel allows them to take their measurement without worrying about adding confusing sign. This sheriff's exercise is utilizing more advanced trackers, and we use them to illustrate some examples of sign. You've got a heel right here. Margins are pretty clear. The rocks are all compacted. Good even edges. We have, we have transfer of dirt right in here. We've got uh, a kick right here, and uh, he generally smashed this grass flat right in here. Okay, you've got a foot has stepped right here, and has pushed this grass all forward, is what we call flagging. And it's all going in the direction of, of the travel, travel, yeah. Yeah, here, the recent here, rain here, has here. laid a trap for Charlie, yeah, and the trackers find vines with the water drops knocked off where he passed by. In addition, he has stepped on this leaf. The resultant sign is called crying, 
and an experienced tracker can tell not only that Charlie passed this way, but how long ago he came through by knowing some elementary facts about how plants repair damage. You can see where it's going. It's all covered with dirt. You've got a tear out here with a little bleeding right, right in there. As the pursuit of Charlie grows hotter, a scraped twig and some dirt transferred to pine needles show that Charlie has come this way. Next, they find a twig broken and the bark scraped off. Charlie has crossed a fence and headed down toward the river. One of the best places to see sign is along natural barriers. These are streams, banks, ridges, or vegetation lines, or they may be fields, roads, or fences. Whatever the natural barrier, they are places which show sign well and which are difficult to cross without leaving sign. Another dead giveaway, which can be like an arrow for tracking by helicopter, an advanced skill which is covered in another videotape, is a condition called shine, which Charlie has left as he went through the grasses near the river. This grass trail is a good illustration of shine. The grass which has been depressed by the footfall and has only returned a portion of the vertical nor normal vertical angle reflects light differently than the rest of the grass around it, therefore leaving you a consistent trail of, as we would call in sign cutting trade, shine. This same grass trail and the shine is the type of sign that is very easily and readily apparent to a helicopter pilot flying from the air. Okay. Since Charlie had dinner that night with his pursuers, we presume they caught him. But the exercise was a good one, and the trackers received high marks from Joel for their efforts. You might ask why not just bring in dogs to track Charlie? Not necessarily his man's best friend, the best tracker. Dogs normally are trained to track by following air scent, either uh, floating through the air or on the trail where a man has walked. This scent, of course, is affected by the same natural elements that affects the sign that a visual tracker follows. And many times, dogs are not able to cope with the changes in that sign and uh, accommodate those. A third major area covered in this training session was used by the military. Once again, a scenario was created to add a little realism to the class. The scene, upriver from a nuclear power plant, a logical target for insurgents. The job to track and capture one or more people suspected of trying to sabotage operation of the plant in such a way that it would cause a major regional disaster. Approaching by water, our trainees find what appears to be a single set of tracks leading away from the water's edge. Apparently, the person was dropped or swam to this point and disappeared into the woods lining the river. Again, a three-man team is used, but the element of security has been added. The lead tracker deploys his security overwatch and begins to examine the track with his crew, trying to make the same observations we saw earlier with our sheriffs and search and rescue teams. It uh, looks like they're trying to hide the uh, number of people they've got. They definitely can't hide that there's somebody came up here, but they're all stepping one inside the other. You see that? Uh, and also this... The last guy to step in is wearing a tennis shoe over top of the Bible. He stepped over top of the Bible. As you can see, Joel has been a little trickier here and is using this exercise to cover a couple of the obvious attempts at camouflage. Let's call in the flanks and show them what we've got here in case anything comes in from the other direction. Uh, if you walk around the other side of me, you'll have the sun angle at the right angle. So you've got As with our other teams, the three head up the beach. In this instance, the security overwatch shadows the team, staying alert for signs of danger. You've got two guys following this line. Uh, you've got one following that with a tennis shoe. Why don't uh, you take one of the flankers and go on that one? If it gets out there too far and it doesn't look like it's going to come back into mine, we'll call another team. The tracks converge again, and the whole team proceeds cautiously up a road, discovered just the other side of the beach. The lead tracker has cut a sign cutting stick. Note that the lead tracker is ticking off each footprint as he passes. This is important, particularly for beginners. A curve is made with a tick on the right or left side, depending on which shoe made the track. This helps narrow the next prime sign area. By following the track step by step, it is easier to make sure the sign cutter has found every step.
A cut branch gives a further clue yeah, of things to come. He broke it off and then cut it with a knife, it looks like there. Now I wonder if maybe they're thinking about trying to wipe out their tracks. I think he's definitely headed for the plant. Yeah, looks like it. Uh, look here, he's trying to throw us off. Uh, he's got a little brush out mark here. Right. I right, follow the brush out here and you can see what he broke that limb off for. The only thing we're going to have to be careful of now is that you don't cut off to the side end. Uh, here's some leaves from the brushy that matches that bush up there. Here's his prints. You can see him. He's walking backwards, brushing in front of him. Here's his heel and his foot. He's dragging his heel back out of it. Very good. Knowledge of tracking, by the way, is also a good way to know the tricks for evading pursuers. But this is a subject also covered in more detail in another videotape. So there you have the rudiments of tracking. We have given you a brief overview of how tracking can be useful in search and rescue, in law enforcement, and in military applications. We have shown you the basics of what sign is and some of the tools and tricks of the sign cutter. We said at the beginning, our purpose here was to make you sign aware. We don't expect you to be expert sign cutters. It takes hours of training and practice to reach a proficiency at the level of the advanced trackers you have seen during the course of this production. At least, however, we hope we have shown you the value of tracking and have piqued your curiosity to know more. Tracking is certainly a potent weapon which should be in the arsenal of all groups we have worked with today.